carbon or alloy? Is it worth spending the extra? Right, today we're not testing bikes specifically, we're testing two versions of the same bike. So Ryan is on the Specialized Stump Jumper Evo Comp Alloy. I'm riding the Specialized Stump Jumper Evo Comp Carbon. And we're gonna be hitting up different points of Stainburn and just jump in between the bikes to uh, see whether it's worth getting that for 3,450 pounds or that for 4,250. I already know I love that bike. Let's see what I think of that one. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully come to some conclusions. Let's do it. So we're off. gonna start how we always start at Stainburn. A couple of laps of the red return loop just to get bikes dialed in, get Ryan used to it. Say I've actually ridden that alloy he's on a lot, but it's a new bike to him, so a couple of laps swapping around see what we think I mean they're set up as close as possible identically so Ryan's a fitter lighter more handsome rider than I am in many ways aesthetic and skill based but we're close enough that we can run the same shock suspension setup same saddle height same tire pressures and apart from the frame the only difference is you get a bit more GX on the carbon bike and uh, more NX on the alloy. But tires, wheels, cockpit, saddle, seat post, shock, fork, everything else is the same. And if you want me a detailed assessment of each bike, there's a test review of the alloy already up and I'll be doing one on the carbon as well. And obviously, there's a lot of geometry adjustment through the headset and the chainstay pivot of this Evo. And I've evened them both up, so both in the neutral 64.5 degree head, high at the rear. So, as they come stock. But, let yeah, say, the interesting thing is that alloy Stumpy, unlike most alloy to carbon comparisons, it actually comes with all the same features in terms of that internal storage and geometry adjust. You know, there's no lack of features and 1300 grams over that difference in weight it's a lot of difference between the carbon and the alloy in terms of mass so it's about 11 percent difference in terms of weight and about 20 percent in terms of price so again carbon is very keenly priced sooner you get more gx kit on it all right swap over mate already interesting on the first climb this alloy bike actually feels a little more chattery and skittery and it does on the descents as well even though shock, rebound, dampening settings, everything are the same and that's particularly interesting because the only major difference between the two bikes is that this is running tubeless so you'd think this would be the softer more compliant ride and while it's not as obvious in terms of climb performance the weight difference it's definitely it's a bit more grunt at little kick corners and that's a pull a bit harder that little gap as well Right, so, classic demo loop now, a bit rockier, and tight berms at the top, so a bit of a stretch for the longer, slacker wheelbase. But, you know, I do love this bike, 
this is one of my picks of the past couple of years already so it's really good to specialize to let me play around with this experiment got those t9 slow rebound super grippy front tires on both bikes faster t7 eliminator on the back and it just feels so secure down here i mean this is where i normally bin it when i say something like that micro analyzing stuff but Brian's certainly not gapping me I keep thinking oh, is he a bit quicker through that and then he'll go offline slightly and I think no I've closed him again but it certainly lands really nicely so interesting to see what happens on the return leg but already you know interesting my initial reaction there is to kind of gear down and just relax immediately where Ryan's on more of a mission straight away. I mean, to be fair, that's Ryan at the moment, but also kind of talks to the general vibe of these two bikes. And already it just feels like this isn't sat quite as heavily on the trail. It almost feels slightly higher and steeper, even though the numbers are exactly the same, but I can still very much pull the same dynamic shapes. Once I've adjusted, and if anything, it's actually easier to get that lighter bike over. And then when you need to put a pedal pop in, that little bit more responsive and again it just feels slightly smoother does this carbon bike it's a little wider there maybe but I mean as you can see we're talking fractions and when it comes to picking up and popping over here really good but then like I did on the alloy the weight just kind of seems to roll Ryan ahead a bit more. So Ryan, a couple of sections in, what's the thinking so far? Yeah, actually I'm surprised because I didn't think I'd value the difference in the two. I thought it would yeah, be... Yeah, so it's about 800 quid. Yeah, okay, about 800 quid between the two and I thought, yeah, the other one's going to be there or thereabouts. So yeah, I mean, because that's a lot of money. That, you know... It is quite a lot of money. Gas prices and all and <laughs> living ain't getting any cheaper. Yeah. 800 pounds. But having done quite a few runs now already... Yeah. I'm already starting to think it might be worth it actually. Yeah, so that's not just dynamic feel, that's like the NX and it, stuff. Yeah, uh, not having the NX, which I'm not a fan of, uh, having the GX, bet better cranks, and the bike feels different. Yeah, it feels yeah. Bike, different in surprising ways, doesn't it? The bike feels different. You can, you can feel the difference in mass for sure, with that all important first pedal when you yeah. get away. Yeah, this um, feels like you get kind of. I was th well after you said that about that first pedal stroke being the most important, which I totally agree with. Yeah. I, it feels like this you get the first three or four pedal strokes almost for free. Yeah. Even on quite a steep climb, even on a drag when you're kind of on the rivet, when you surge, it gives you those second and third pedal strokes, and that, it gives you a little period of grace. Whereas that's like, yeah, straight if, away. If you're hauling up uh, rocky stuff, when you're almost come to a stop and you need to, yeah. Get yourself moving again. That crux point. That makes the difference there for sure. Uh, and and the, the actual ride character is, is different as well, which we'll probably have to come back to. But Yeah, there's some things, we've already planning some things like swapping wheels around maybe and stuff like that. Yep. To see how princessy we're being about the tubes or tubeless and and also maybe even the weight of that rear cassette. Because obviously the GX cassette on the carbon bike is significantly lighter than the NX cassette on that bike. And maybe we are sensitive enough to actually pick that up in the suspension because in theory there's nothing else happening in there and it's that same super well proven specialized fsr four bar kinematic on both bikes so super neutral in terms of pedaling and braking so carbon kilo and a half to be good <laughs> it's me who's losing grip 
certainly not that T7 tyre on the stumpy. Brian making it look horribly easy on that one. Seems to go better, mate. I mean, that would be blissful for me, but <laughs> we're just trying to work out what this section might showcase. And as Ryan points out, ideally for me, it's watching him stumble, fall off and have a hard time of it because that's how he normally makes me feel. So we'll see if the carbon frame, <laughs> I've already lost my foot out of the pedals. That'll learn me right, that's just karma. But we'll see if that carbon frame, sorry, this carbon frame is enough of a compensator. <laughs> yeah. And also you gotta, that's one thing you gotta remember with carbon. It's slightly more nerve wracking in situations like this. If you do drop the bike, that alloy bike's gonna dent. You might still cause it grievous damage, but there's a difference psychologically between a dent and a crack. Although, to be fair, you've got more chance of repairing a cracked carbon frame. Some of these don't mind a bit of a sort of fiberglass canoe bulge, and you can't really repair alloy at all. What? Did you deliberately stall me then? <laughs> Swine. But again, here it comes. It's making this feel nice and easy compared to normal. Even with rubbish legs. This is an exceptional bike. And that just goes to show that even if you've got a bike advantage, it's still all about the rider. <laughs> it's alright, it's gone. Right. Ryan's revenge now. <laughs> oh, look at him go. He's all hoppy and poppy now. Skippy and Bambi. Come on, steady alloy. I still like this. I like the way it feels anchored and assured. And I'm going to keep telling myself that. Even though oh, the little bug has opened the gap, though. Look at that. Again. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little pop and skip there. I can see his wheels clearing stuff that mine are clipping onto. Oh, go on, please. <sighs> that was tight. You know I need momentum. Such a bitch. And he's a bloody good wingman. But he's also a swine. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, hello metal. Smell the metal. Heavy metal thunder. I can see you being kind. You're just hanging around to hear me hurt. But nevertheless, this bike does pretty damn well for 16 kilos. Certainly lighter bikes, I'd less like to try and get up here because they're not as balanced all the traction isn't there or whatever but that's a definite gear down moment oh yeah come on yes well, clean that <laughs> that's a bonus <clears throat> should stop talking before I'm sick Come on, Alloy. So this is better because I cleaned it, right? Ha! Oh, bloody love testing bikes, dead dead. It's always fascinating. Hold Topsy. This one. <laughs> so much easier to lift. Going again. And the fact you're talking, I'm trying not to be sick. Maybe, yeah, maybe that too. Yeah. 
Uh, more maneuverable coming in as well. Yeah. Through the turns. Yeah, it's interesting. I really like the planted solid feel of this, but you just chipping and well, it encourages zipping you away. More. This encourages you more. Yeah. To have fun and move and move it around. And uh, I guess 3D cut and paste agility. As I had to ban myself from saying in tests. Okay. When people started complaining about it on forums because I used it too much. Right. Oh yeah, and there's a single tracker interviewing me, single track magazine. Who hosted the infamous well for me, probably no one else noticed it, but the Has Guy Kestivan achieved peak bike journo forum thread. Where they had me completely banged to rights a few years ago. Yeah, apparently I'm gonna be in there as well. It's interesting. Everywhere. That's like DC being interviewed by Marvel. <laughs> Whatever the equivalent is. Ah. A McDonald's uh, interview in a Burger King restaurant. Yeah, I think I'm definitely Doctor Strange, not Captain America though. Got that. We were talking about this earlier, that's why that came up, but I'm still the kind of idiot who does a running chase, even though I have all sorts of superpowers. That's what <laughs> they're talking about. But uh, yeah, I reckon both these bikes pretty high up on the superhero register, but yeah. has cape wears cape, flies. This is more of an Iron Man. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just making words up. But I am actually breathing and talking now, so let's crack on. Yeah, it's interesting. It's probably going to be a fairly gruesome it's exposition of... Oh no, I already slid the back wheel. A basic physics up what we call vinegar strokes. And I'm sure it doesn't look steep on the GoPro. It never does. I'm also sure I'm taking a lousy line, but I know where I'd rather be. And it's on that carbon bike that's rapidly getting smaller up the hill. Bye! Bye! No need for the hand wave, right? Right, so here's a nice little traction and torque tester. Oh, hello. And some indexing issues at the back, but still, look at that. Still got that power and grip. Easy oh, that's not <laughs> fair. <laughs> oh, oh, swine. <laughs> I'm being arty now. Did it to be, Ryan? Hard line for me, man. Hard line for you on the easy bike option. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Oh. I hate that man. Love the bike, though. You know, and the last thing I want to do is say that this is a bad bike in any way. This alloy stump jumper. Because there's no doubt it's one of the best alloy bikes you can buy and probably one of the best alloy mountain bikes ever made. The features on it are amazing. The ride quality is superb. The detailing, the storage, that little offset strut with internal cable routing, the adjustable geometry, everything they've packaged into this metal frame is fantastic. You know, I gave it four and a half out of five stars review in Bike Perfect and still stand by that by being one of the best bikes I've ridden in a long time but and also it's kind of an unfair comparison because you know this is relatively expensive and heavy for an alloy bike because of all those extra features and if you don't want them then get the status you know the mullet bike from Specialized with the simpler frame and very similar geometry but smaller back wheel and considerably cheaper. Oh wow. <laughs> I mean Ryan's still probably gonna dump me like a dirt bag but right. certainly feels much brighter and much fresher. I'd almost say it feels stiffer. And what's worse is if you 
slow oh. down on the alloy bike. It's oh. really hard to get moving again, isn't it, Ryan? <laughs> oh dear, something must have stalled him. Smile. And as well as being lighter, potentially stiffer around the BB, you've also got a lighter, stiffer crank set as well. A lighter cassette. And all these little things just feeding into, eking out that bit of energy, getting you a bit further for each pedal stroke. And the other thing to point out is that not only do you get full carbon, you don't get an alloy rear end like some companies do to keep the cost down on entry level carbon bikes. And it's not a dumbed down carbon mix either. It's the full Fact 11M. It's the same layup as they use on the S-Works, the flagship bike. I think it's only the fact that you get a carbon linkage on that bike that makes a difference. And even at that, it's only about 90 grams. So once you add in that extra GX kit, you are getting a really good value bike for a top of the range carbon frame. So both these bikes are just brilliant expressions of, you know, state of the art modern trail bikes. But it's hard to see any downside to this carbon bike. It's lighter, it's brighter. Whoop. Got a bit too close to Ryan there. Sharper and just more agile and prompt. And while that Stump Jumper Ally is a bike that you can definitely ride all day, you know, it is a proper trail bike. It's not just a gravity bike. This lighter, brighter, I said it again. That must be true then. <laughs> Carbon bike is a bike you can really enjoy all day. Really hustle on more kind of XC power tracks and sections like this. You know, that gift of the extra pedal stroke, the reduced inertia, sharper. It's just, oh, I'm proper off piecing here. But again, you've still got that. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Geometry. So, in summary, both brilliant bikes, but what are you saying, Ryan? Both Team bikes, but it's, if you can, then you should. It's one very, very important test we haven't done yet, though. You mean that test? Yeah, the test. The test that could change the uh, dynamic of this whole comparison. Absolutely, let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. It's what state? Are the sausage rolls in? Oh yeah. Yeah. Bit of flake in there. Oh, I think it's a pass. Yeah. Do you want to uh, do it's mine? Expect. Oh, there's a lot of flake falling out of yours there, mate. That's oh, not bad for a few know? Oh, ones. mate, I'm I'm sorry. Yours is losing a lot more pastry. Yeah. Mine's a fair amount in the bag. I don't know. Either way. I reckon you're winning. Pretty good. And thanks to Kendall's Spudgers, the uh, very, very important test equipment there. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed us getting to the meat of one of the biggest questions in uh, mountain biking, frame material, which should you go for? And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed doing the testing. I've been doing this gig 25 years now, and I still get a massive thrill out of putting bikes head to head and really digging into the details on them. And uh, hopefully you've found it informative as well. So massive thanks to Ryan. Massive thanks to uh, Georgia at uh, Specialized UK for setting me up with both these bikes. Uh, thanks to Zero for keeping me clothed. Thanks to PEs for stopping me squeaking and keeping my bikes clean. Thanks to Crud for keeping my face clean and stopping mud getting on the camera. And uh, thanks to my Patreon supporters. I mean, Ryan's one of my Patreon supporters as well. But those guys pledge a small amount on a monthly basis to help me keep the cameras rolling and they get extended exclusive behind the scenes ad free edits as a thank you so if you like what i'm doing the channel please consider joining me on patreon and uh, yeah helping out 
But thanks for watching anyway. Uh, obviously, you might have a lot of comments coming back from this, so please get busy with asking questions. Always keen to help. Always good to have a lively discussion below the uh, videos. And uh, click for notifications so you can see when the uh, standalone video on the Stumpy Carbon comes out. Stumpy Evo Carbon comes out. There's already one on the Alloy Bike. I'll put that in the link at the end. And uh, just, you know, a whole load more content and if you like this kind of head-to-head -head thing let me know and i'll try and get more of them lined up because uh, bike availability is getting better now but for now i've been guy kesteven on guy Kes tv talking about the two brilliant but surprisingly different stump jumper specialized stump jumper evo comps in carbon and alloy <laughs>